Thank you, everyone. So we're switching gears from uh, finance to macroeconomics. And uh, my name is Brian Bejanov, and I'm presenting today on behalf of uh, uh, Nicola Belsampierre and uh, Jason Jensen. Uh, we're at the Bank of Canada. Uh, and as such, I have to uh, make it a point that uh, the opinions are our own and do not reflect uh, the governing council of the Bank of Canada uh, in any way. So the Bank of Canada, as you may know, is Canada's central bank. Uh, and as such, we set the uh, uh, interest rate uh, as part of the monetary policy. And one of the important ingredients that goes into the interest rate decision is so-called um, Canadian economic projection, uh, which is a long-term simulation of the Canadian economy uh, running on uh, um, large macroeconomic uh, models. Uh, and the important point here is that these models are actually run by economists who are experts in their own field, which is the field of economics, uh, but they're not necessarily uh, experts in software development. So this is an important consideration, uh, which we took into account when we updated our software platform for um, uh, running these projections, uh, and we uh, published these uh, three packages which uh, support that platform uh, internally. So, uh, yes, numerical methods are important. We need all the numerical methods to, to, to run the simulations and all the related analysis. Uh, but equally important for us is to have this intuitive and easy-to-use interface so that the economists can wield the power of these algorithms to do their work while thinking about economics and not thinking about programming and the computers. So the rest of the talk I will, and Julie is, uh, is particularly uh, good for both of these. Like, uh, we all know how fast Julie is and, and appropriate for uh, scientific computing, but also Julia has these uh, metaprogramming capabilities which allow us to hit the second point uh, equally well. And the rest of the talk I'll just show you some examples of uh, what we've done uh, to that effect. So when we start with a, with a economic model, the, the model is empty and we just add variables and of course, model variables are not really uh, Julia variables. So we can use these very simple macros uh, to just declare variables in the model. If you had to do it with the standard API, we have to know how to create these uh, uh, instances of model variable in different ways for different types of variables, how to properly insert them into the, into the model. And these are all programming details that uh, the economists don't really need to worry about. Uh, similar thing about model parameters. And here in addition, um, we have these uh, link type parameters, uh, which allow us to define a parameter that depends on other parameters. And this becomes really handy. Uh, in th this example that I'm building here is a very simple autoregressive uh, model, although you can run like, much more complex and nonlinear large uh, models. This is like a simple example just for clarity of illustration. Uh, with this, even with this simple example, uh, there are two parameters in the equation. Row one is interesting. This is an autoregressive coefficient. Row zero is not interesting at all. The interesting one is the steady state. So we allow the economy to set the steady state in row one and row zero just automatically. Uh, once again, like, you would have to know the internals of our, of our package to do this programmatically. Um, the equations, same deal, but more complicated. Now we have to translate this piece of economics, which is this equation, into a piece of software that the rest of the uh, code base can work with to, to do what it needs to do. Uh, and all the heavy lifting is done in this at initialize macro, uh, where we create the necessary functions and we insert uh, the, the equations provided by the, by the economists appropriately. So they don't have to worry about these uh, uh, programming details. Uh, we take care of that for them. Uh, here is all the code that we built so far, uh, and we recommend to put it in its own module for two reasons, like one, so that it holds these uh, extra functions that at initialize create, uh, so they don't pollute the um, uh, namespace in main, but also to emphasize the separation of here is code that defines a model, and separately we have code that, that, that works with it. Um, here is an example of a simulation. We have four periods with some shocks, and then uh, the, the system relaxes to its steady state, and how fast depends on row one, and the steady state doesn't change because row zero adjusted automatically. In addition, we have these extra macros that can be used inside the equations blocks uh, to create some um, as shortcuts for some of the most typical um, time series operations. And I have a, uh, an interesting example here how we can add the Hodrick-Prescott filter to, to our simple model. This is a 
a popular filter among uh, economists. And we can literally directly implement the, the definition of the filter uh, by using this uh, moving weighted sum, like we spell out the coefficients, uh, and the solver is going to invert this operator and apply the, the, the Prescott, uh, the, the HP filter to, uh, to A. Uh, very intu intuitive and straightforward for the economist to implement this. Uh, and here is an example of a simulation with, uh, with it. The last two examples are not about uh, um, the models, but about working with uh, actual time series data. Uh, and so with time series data, unlike time stamp data, uh, we have a frequency. This means that the distance between, in time between observations is uh, constant according to the frequency. And in order to uh, iterate uh, along the um, uh, range of a time series, we have to be able to add one to a date uh, repeatedly. And if you try to do this with a date from the standard library, it doesn't work because its operation doesn't make sense. That's the correct behavior. Uh, but if you have, in, in, in our package time series econ, the dates have frequency information. So if you add one to the day with daily frequency, we get tomorrow. But if it's a business daily frequency, then we get Monday. And if it's a weekly frequency, then we get someday next week, depending on uh, uh, the type of weekly frequency, which day of the week it ends. And the last example is uh, how we can use the same macros for time series operations that we saw in the, um, in the equations block, uh, but this time outside of a model to process data. Uh, and this is a simple example with uh, moving average. Uh, we can, of course, write a for loop that does the same thing, but the macro will not work in the for loop, and so we will have to spell out the, um, the formal explicitly ourselves. Uh, so this is an example of, uh, of uh, what that calculation looks like. And finally, um, if you're like us and you're writing code that's going to be run by other people, and these other people are not software developers but are experts in some uh, uh, field of their own, then please make an effort to make their life easier. Uh, Julia's meta programming capabilities make it really easy to do this, so you really don't have an excuse not to do it. Thank you for your attention. And do we have time for uh, questions? Unfortunately, we've run out of time for questions. Do we have any, though? Hey, just two questions. So, I mean, like, you're using the uh, metagrammatic facilities to make it easier for, for other people to use, um, to, that, but then you handle the machinery uh, behind the scene. Now, how, how often do you get requests to change the machinery? How do you handle that? I mean, or, or they're just happy with what, what, what you give them right now. So the question is, uh, how often do you have to change the underlying machinery to actually support the metaprogramming uh, for front end that you support? Uh, thank you for this question. Um, our packages are uh, quite stable by now. Like they've been uh, published uh, since 2020, if I remember correctly. Uh, so we have to make these kinds of changes uh, uh, like not very frequently, but. Yes, it's, it's not easy to do. Uh, when, when we have to do it, it's, it's a bit of a struggle. Thank All right, let's thank the speaker once more.